happening y'all what's going on so uh let's see here i'm gonna try to keep this one uh, a little short here just kind of a quick check-in let you know what's going on what the current agenda is and the dispatches for the day uh and briefly what's been going on so uh, let's start off with a check-in here we got uh Wednesday, August 22nd, the time is 1.15 in the p.m., current temperature is 91 degrees, and I am oop, running off the road. <laughs> I am currently uh, headed southbound on I-5, uh, went and picked up another FEMA load from Tracy, California. And this time headed out to Pineville, Louisiana. So, that said, let's see what uh, my details are here. So, I've got 1,915 miles to go. That gives me about, uh, well, I've already been driving for about an hour and a half, so my total time out there is about 28 hours. And I'm gonna try and get that done in two days. When we uh, when we haul these FEMA loads, we qualify under a federal exemption on our logbooks, so we can actually drive as many hours as we wish. And so I'm gonna shoot for about 14 hours of drive per day, and see if I can knock out, you know, at least the good majority of it in two days. So my plan for right now is to uh, make it as far as Flagstaff and um, actually that should still leave me quite a bit of drive time. My uh, time to Flagstaff is looking at about nine hours. So that, you know that'll leave me a couple more hours, a couple few more hours uh, to keep going. Probably, you know, yeah, I'll make it a good distance past that. That's only 612 miles, so that's nothing. So yeah, so that's what's going on. Um, so yesterday, I was uh, hanging out out there in Fresno when picked up a, you know, uh, a trailer for somebody who broke down over in Tulare, Tulare, and brought that back to Fresno and dropped it off at a uh, FedEx facility. And that turned out to be an interesting thing because. <clears throat> You know, not being an employee of FedEx, <laughs> they were kind of freaking freaking out about having somebody in their yard. You know, of course, I mean, I was I was in there under you know authority and all that, but still, it was just an interesting thing. And then, um, so then I got dispatched up to Patterson, California, to go pick up an empty trailer from an Amazon and uh, do a round trip down to LA. Uh, get that empty trailer loaded and then bring it back up to Patterson and that would have been today I would have been bringing it back up there But when I got to Patterson it turned out that uh, they didn't have any empties and so they just canceled it so um, So I went and found a flying Dre a flying J truck stop, you know, just right down the street from that place in Patterson <coughs> Excuse me and um you know, spent the night there, and the place was packed. I mean, it was just packed, you know, and they always are, you know, once it starts getting late in the evening. So, I uh, went and pulled up, and, you know, you know, I mean, and truck drivers do this all the time, you know, and, you know, when these places are packed, you, you need to find some place to sleep. So, uh, you know, I just, I parked in a no parking zone where there was a red curb, and there was, uh, and I was just bobtail. And there was a, uh, a truck and trailer that was like already parked when I got there. And he was parked in the same kind of red curb zone, uh, you know, as I went parked in. And, uh, and overnight, you know, I, you know, like when I'm sleeping in the truck, I, you know, kind of get up a few times, you know, a night, just I wake up, you know, for whatever reason. And uh, I had noticed that that next to this this particular truck and trailer 
other trucks and trailers had started parking parallel to him, but not alongside the curb. They started parking literally parallel to them to him and building out into the parking lot, into the into the uh, the the like the entrance to the fuel island. And, and it had got to be like five trucks that were parked, just a bunch of freaking airheads, right? Doing this, you know? And uh, and so there was, you know, at, at, at the most, I think there was five, I know there was five, there might have even been six at one point, parked just, you know, you know, building up this big wall, right? And I'm sitting there, you know, and, and noticing it, you know, going back to sleep, and, you know, and so I got up at about 6 o'clock, got a call from the boss, 6 a.m. And, uh, you know, he had told me that, so, yeah, we got this FEMA load thing. So, you know, I went ahead and roused myself and, you know, went and brushed my teeth and all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, came back out to the truck and, uh, you know, was, was doing a back and forth with the boss, you know, on text message. And um, he goes, you know, one of them, he's got, he goes, well, so... Uh, I fax your BOLs uh, to uh, to the Flying J there at Fuel Desk. So go ahead and go in there and grab those, and then meet another driver over at the FEMA yard. Okay. So I go in there and wait for them to print out the the the, 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 the BOLs, you know, on the fax machine. And I come walking back out, and there's a sheriff, uh, commercial vehicle sheriff, out there writing me a ticket. <laughs> And I'm just like, man, what? <laughs> so I walk up, and I'm, as I'm walking up, the, there was two guys. There was a younger guy riding the ticket and an older guy walking back towards me. Hey, is this your truck? He's like, yeah. He goes, yeah, well, he's writing you a ticket. And I'm like, oh, you're kidding. And the guy gave me a look like he was going to rip my head off. I said, oh, you're not kidding. I can see that, <laughs> you know. And he eases back, you know. So then they hand me the ticket. And so I'm like, unbelievable, you know. And and all those trucks that had been there were now gone. And the only truck that was left was the one behind me who had parked there in the first place before I was even parked there. And they were like going back and forth with him and talking for a while, but I don't think they were gonna give him a ticket. The only reason why they gave me a ticket because I wasn't with my truck for that two minutes that I had gone inside to grab the BOL. And the only reason why Flying Jays called to have the sheriff come deal with that was because of all these airheads that were, you know, building this wall with their trucks in front of the fuel island. I can't believe it, you know. And so it's, you know, and I was Bobtail. I wasn't even in a trailer. So I mean, I was the smallest truck out there and the and and, and blocking the least amount of anything and I got the ticket. <laughs> so that's how my morning started off. So there you go. It's, I guess, going to be one of those kind of things. I don't know. It just, it freaking pissed me off. I ain't going to lie. It pissed me off because it wouldn't have been a problem with all these idiots having to just, you know, park like dumb shits, you know, whatever. So, it is what it is. So, yeah, I got that going for me. So, anyhow, yeah, I guess uh, this didn't turn out to be kind of short. So, so be it. But, uh, so yeah, heading southbound down five right now. I'm going to be traveling through California, obviously, through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, and into Louisiana. So, um, that's the deal. And I guess I'll, uh, probably pop in later with, uh, you know, some more video if, uh, the mood should strike me. So, hope you all are doing well. See ya. to mention I am currently gross weight at 73,140 pounds and uh, decreasing the more fuel I spend <laughs> so yeah 73,000 pounds uh, the load contains uh, 500,000 uh, emergency relief meals something like that so you know, if it's heading out to Louisiana, you know, we, we brought that last people load out to uh, Alabama. You know, that's obviously probably for uh, anticipation of hurricane season. So, 